Okay, I'm at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, and I'm with... Randall Okita. I'm the uh, writer-director of a film called The Lockpicker. So tell me about The Lockpicker. The Lockpicker is a story about a teen thief that gets pulled into a bit of a cycle of violence, and he's trying to find his way out, uh, trying to find his way to be in the world. Uh, so it's a bit of a psychological portrait with some thriller elements. Mm -hmm. And where do, what is the setting and the location there? We're sort of set uh, in, in North American suburbia. Okay. You know, we shot it in and around Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of, of sort of that, the space that teens have and a lot of bus riding and school and part-time jobs. And he's trying to sort of find, find his space in the aftermath of um, the death of a friend. Okay, and so how, does, how did the story come together for you? Well, it's, uh, it's based on some of my personal experiences and some people close to me, and it's about sort of a particular intersection of time when, you know, I think, I think for many of us it, it's tough to be teenagers. Mm -hmm. It was a tough time to be a teenager, and um, for, for our main character, you know, this also sort of coincides with the death of a friend and the kind of bullying and, and different kind of violence that sometimes find their way into teenage lives. and. And you know, when those things kind of coincide, sometimes it can become a bit of a, a da dangerous situation. So mm -hmm. it's about a particular moment in this in this young man's life where things get a little scary for him, and uh, the audience kind of uh, goes from being scared for him to scared of him. Mm -hmm. So this is. It sounds like it's at the at a, the moment in time as a youth when you kind of make decide what path you're going to walk down for the rest of your life. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And so how. Um, Let's see. So, is this where are you in the in your filmmaking career? Is this your first? Or? This is my first feature. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've done uh, we've done a number of shorts, and um, I also do a lot of art projects and some visual art projects. Uh, and this, you know, there there are some experimental moments in it. We call it a you know like a psychological portrait. Mm -hmm. um, we also sort of the way that we build the films is is kind of from the ground up. So we worked with. Um, a, a, an open working high school we shot in and around this this high school that was up and running and classes were happening and we worked with a bunch of um, first time teenagers in front of the camera behind the camera we had a big sort of mentorship methodology that was built into the thing so we introduced ourselves to the school and we sort of embedded ourselves there our lead it was his first time acting and you know none of the actors sort of saw the entirety of the script up front so they kind of went through the journey with us mm -hmm. um, and learned along the way and that was a big part of how we made it and and you know one of the things we said is we we sort of valued authenticity um, over a lot of the other sort of traditional filmmaking uh, practices. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, you know the bad habits we we get when we go into education and and learning and training. That's it. That's <laughs> it. So uh, let's see. So sorry, I'm trying to think of the. Um, okay, so uh, okay, so you were kind of using this as as kind of a teaching moment as well for yeah for your cast and crew, so to speak. Absolutely. You know. Um, there's a, there's a lot of talk these days about representation and, and this kind of thing and um, you know if uh, my my kind of thought is if you're going to tell a story about a community um, that's a sort of intended for a community you should you should involve this community in the telling of the story mm -hmm. um, you know I I do a lot of uh, teaching of filmmaking and I really believe in it as a as a as a instrumental tool in sort of um, you know learning about life and, and sort of learning to express yourself and that kind of thing so um, it sort of made sense that when we were telling this when I was telling this very personal sort of teen story to to get the teens involved and to get young people involved and um, especially when you're dealing with sort of violent events or uh, potentially traumatizing events in the story of a character or in the story of our sort of real lives um, I really wanted to take a little bit of extra time and explain to them why we were telling this story. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of stories out there of, of, of people trying to tell stories that, uh, you know, I think are often important, but you also don't want to traumatize your crew or your actors in the, in the telling of these stories. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we would just take that extra moment and say, hey guys, this is, this is what we're trying to represent. This isn't a pretty picture. This isn't a, a, a positive experience, but this is why we think it's important. And this is, you know, how we can sort of unpack it. And this is why I want to, um, show this as part of the story so that people can understand uh, what it's like to go through that and how it could be potentially dangerous and, and maybe in sort of 
seeing it from a young person's perspective who doesn't have a safety net that maybe you know when we're out there in the world we can sort of have a little bit more of a connection to those kind of real life characters right yeah so what were as a filmmaker now what were some of the challenges you had to to get the project up and running oh a lot of things i mean i think you know there's a lot of these kind of coming of age stories and we had a lot of resistance especially if it's a you know a troubled teen story and and i think particularly coming out of canada uh there's there's a lot of those and a lot of them are dark and morose and a lot of people sort of shy away from those as funders or or um you know potential collaborators that's something that's just a little too dark to to back and yeah and so you know it was it's it's hard to say well we're going to do something different you know, and, and for people to, to, to sort of get what you're going for sometimes. Uh, so that was a challenge up front. And then, you know, we w knew we were taking on something really different in terms of the way we put it together. Um, you know, we, were, we, are, we are in many ways a small film, but we shot for 35 days, which is, you know, an incredibly long yeah. period of time <laughs> for the amount of resources we had. But we knew that we had to sort of build into the schedule um, the time that would be, that would, would take to work with the first time actors and to sort of have these kind of teaching moments during the process and you know I think it comes through in spades in terms of the the, the, the nuances and the, the feeling of authenticity of the teen experience um, but it's a challenge to sort of um, get a lot of people on board with that at first when you say you know we've only got we've only got a little bit of resources but we're gonna we're gonna really take our time with it so that we can involve these people and and um, involve these students in a certain way I think like I say it, it it pays off as it often does when you when you bake that kind of thing into a recipe um, but um, initially you sort of have to get everybody on board with that I mean once they did and once the crew was sort of on board I think um, I've heard uh, a lot of really great positive feedback and a lot of really good feedback, you know, not only about the film, but from the crew members just of, of the way of making uh, a, a film like that. I think it really uh, sort of illuminated the different possibilities, which I think, especially these days when, like you said, you know, whether it's teaching or production, we can get into these routines and these habits that don't always yield the best results but it's just it's just the way things are done mm -hmm. um, it's it's nice and it was a great great reminder for me I mean I kept expecting somebody to show up and pull the plug and be like okay <laughs> you had your fun now you got to go, do it, go back and do it the other way but uh, we, you know we managed to do it and I really like thinking about um, all kinds of projects in 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 in, in my life uh, like that and just sort of just taking a minute and examining like what are we really trying to do here like sure we're, we're trying to create a film and a product that makes its way out into the world but but is this the best way to do it? Mm -hmm. Just because that was the way we did it last time or that's the way we have been doing it. What do, what do we need for this particular story, you know? So was there a lot of selling and inspiring that occurred? I mean, I imagine the, the greatest tension of yes, no, go, no, go was happening like right before you started filming. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, getting the crew on board, sort of explaining this methodology you know and uh, you know I'm a, I'm a I'm a passionate guy and I'm a stubborn guy but I think particularly it's really hard to uh, when you know and you know that the people around you know you haven't done this before <laughs> you know this you know everything yeah, you're, you're a fraud yeah, this <laughs> sounds this sounds actually like it makes this crazy idea sounds like it makes sense mm -hmm. but you haven't proven this model <laughs> before you know but but the the amazing thing I think about filmmaking in general I mean it, you know oftentimes it's the script and you might have this kind of crazy script and and it's really hard to get going but once you have that core team mm -hmm. that believes in it and then they start saying what you've been saying or they start sort of explaining it to other people yeah. once the train was moving right people stop questioning because as soon as you know as soon as two or three producers are saying oh no this is how we're doing it right. then people stop questioning it and they get on board and so the they saw your vision and then bought into it and now it's just easier now you have advocates that's it that's exactly it and and the incredible thing was you know working with the the younger students you know the teenagers and the high school students they didn't know any different so they they would just come on board and give everything and 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 you know wouldn't bat an eye so yeah. you wouldn't even have that sort of first like wait a minute this isn't how production <laughs> works and you know for example our lead um, a lot of people really don't believe that it was his first performance you know a lot of people s are, 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 are really uh, taken by his performance and I think um, you know he gave a huge amount of, of, of of soul and mm -hmm. and and charisma and you know he's a pretty incredible yeah. actor and performer and human but also I think he pulled off some of these incredible moments because he didn't know they were supposed to be hard yeah you know he didn't know that um, 
he, he didn't, didn't have he, his training to back him yeah, up. Yeah, and he didn't know, oh, okay, this is my big day and this is going to happen and I'm going to get nervous and not, not a lot of people are able to pull off these kind of moments out in the right. actor's world that he just, you know, showed up and this is what we were doing today and then he went for it. And I think part of that is, uh, you know, you only get a couple of times like that where you just, you, 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 you don't know any better, so you manage something pretty incredible. And I think in many ways for me too that, mm-hmm. that you, know, you know, you look back on this and if I was to start it again, I would be much more nervous knowing how hard it was but um, that's part of it as well, right? Yeah. So what is your message for the film? What do you, what do you want uh, us as an audience to walk away with? Hmm, I think, like I say, you know, sort of uh, the, the ability to understand uh, from the inside. You know, we went after this sort of psychological portrait because I didn't want to tell, tell a story about a teenager in a dangerous situation. I wanted to tell a story uh, of what it felt like to be that teenager in that dangerous situation. Yeah. Um, you know, fe- what, feeling what it felt like to fall through the cracks as opposed to watching somebody fall through the cracks mm-hmm. because it's a very different kind of proposition. And um, yeah, I, I guess my hope is, is that people realize that uh, you don't have to, to be a bad person to get in the position to do bad things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, keep an eye out for that kind of thing. Yeah. Because there are a lot of kids. I mean, it's, this is that time. I, I I just talked to another filmmaker about this exact same thing. But you know, there's that road, that that fork in the road you have to take, and you choose. You know, what your future is going to be. And a lot of kids nowadays don't see beyond high school or yeah. graduating from high school, and they don't necessarily see that there is that there is a world beyond that, other than the world they're currently living in. I think uh, that's a, a incredibly important and powerful sort of thing to understand. I mean, once we crack it as adults or, you know, once we're out there in the world and we realize either we know what we're doing or nobody knows what they're doing, then, you know, that's a, that's a different kind of situation, different kind of way of being in the world. But when you're a, a teenager and you're facing the end of high school, um, I think, yeah, it's a, it's a, it can be pretty scary because you realize, you, I think you can feel like you don't have anywhere to go. And so I think for, for most of us, if, whether it's family or job or different things, you have those anchors that are keeping you, you know, on a certain kind of path, often, you know, a more positive path because you, you're connected to people and you're connected to sort of goals you have. And if you don't have those, uh, it can be pretty scary. You know, you're looking for those, you're kind of, kind of anchorless and you're floating around and certain ideas will get into your head or bad ideas or bad people could get into your, you know, uh, uh, the, the, your friend, your peer group and that kind of thing. And that's how things can go pretty sideways pretty quick, I think. So it's, it's good to remember or try to try to remind ourselves, whether through storytelling or, or, you know, interaction, just what that can feel like. Uh, because it's, like I say, it's not, it's not bad people that set out to do bad things, but you know, if, if, if there's nothing else going on and right. this thing if starts... this is your only choice. Yeah. yeah, and it starts becoming, you know, a pretty reasonable choice compared to, 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 to nothing else, you know? Yeah. Okay, so what does it mean to you to be here at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival? Oh, my goodness. Um, it means that magic is possible, I think, <laughs> you know. Uh, we're talking about having these crazy ideas and, and, and you know, you kind of go after them because you want to see them come to life. And, and, and for me, just the, the concept that a bunch of strangers are going to be able to kind of take in this story that's, that's made up of all these incredible heartbeats from uh, uh, crew members and actors and people that took on this challenge, that, that, that's the magic. I still, I still it's not quite, a, quite a, 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 a leap that my brain can understand. Yeah. You know, I go to the screening and I will sit there with the audience and just, you know, I'm just in awe of it. I think mm-hmm. it's pretty incredible to be able to, to share with people in, in a different city, in a different world. And, you know, we've had some nice screenings so far and, and people see themselves mm-hmm. in this uh, weird and wonderful, you know, universe that you've created. And to me, it's just, it's, it's magical. So, um, and particularly this festival, the community and the support, um, is 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 very very special you know it means a lot to me and you know um to be able to see yourself in all of the films out here is 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 something you know it's it's beyond words how powerful that can be particularly for a young person let alone for for me who's older now you know it's such a powerful uh, uh transformative experience and i think um, to be able to do that with so many films here and, 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 and meet other filmmakers that are doing the same kind of thing, it's, it's pretty, pretty incredible. And do you, do you have any insight as, as being an Asian filmmaker? What do you mean? Like, um, I guess, you know, because I'm, I'm much older, 
And so getting into the arts and getting into filmmaking was never really an option for us from, yeah. our, from our parental standpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, did you have similar struggles or do you think things are a lot easier, you know, for Asians to be creative and, and tell their stories? I, I had very similar struggles. I mean, for me, it was it was a completely insane idea. And I don't think it should be as insane as it was maybe for, for, for us. I feel like you only need a couple of beacons out there. You know, I remember the first time I met somebody who was an artist for a living and I was I was pretty old. And, and I was like, wait, what, what do you mean? What else do you do? And, but just that light turning on for me was incredible. And for me to be able to see that as, as a filmmaker, I mean, it was another number of years. I, I, I know from personal experience how powerful that can be. And, and you know, I, I, I think that it's, it's one of the most important things we can do. And I think that this festival is doing such a great job of, of, of sharing and exposing sort of these great artists that are sometimes underappreciated and, and sometimes have a more difficult place finding it into a larger marketplace or a larger a audience. Um, yeah, I think it's an immensely powerful thing to, to, to share all kinds of stories and, and for particularly for young people to be able to see themselves doing uh, a variety of different things and and uh, for parents of young people to see that it is a viable option and that it makes sense and that you know it's it's not such a such a crazy idea to sort of pursue these kind of alternative um, not alternative but to these other maybe non-traditional sort of pursuits um, I think it's incredibly important and and I mean I'm learning every day from the community and I think uh, from the inside you know, it's just about sort of staying true to yourself and not trying to replicate the successes mm -hmm. of anybody else, whether it's within the community yeah. or, or, or elsewhere. Um, but it's, it's pretty powerful to see people that look like you or that have your experiences. Um, and have their support too. Yeah, yeah and, and, and for these stories to be treated like they have value, right? I think, you know, you, you can often uh, um, internalize this idea that this is what an important story looks like. This is what a, a character uh, worthy of a feature film looks like mm -hmm. and for you to see something you know and then so you internalize that because you don't look like any of those people um, or you don't sound you know you don't have the life experience of any of those people I think as soon as you realize that your stories are just as valuable as anybody else mm -hmm. uh, this can transform sort of the way you see the world and the way you hold yourself in it mm -hmm. okay so uh, congratulations when when is your screening we are screening uh, Saturday so tomorrow at 4 30 p.m. at the downtown independent Mm -hmm. And where does it go beyond this? Well, this will probably come out after that. So right. Well, we will be. You know, check us out the Lockpicker Movie uh, dot com or or my website Randall Okita, and we, you know we've got a number of other festival screenings coming up, and then we'll be out for wide release uh, probably in the fall in North America. Oh, amazing. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks,